And again, about intentionality. Again, picking up on what I was reading in the Gallagher and Zahavi book this morning. And, uh, and about the kind of size of intentional actions and, and what kind of falls out from that. Uh, and when I was talking before, I was citing this thing about getting a cup out of the dishwasher and putting it on the counter prior to making a cup of coffee and how that's, um, well, in, in the way I was talking before, it was a kind of subordinate level of, of, of organization. But just thinking about that as an intentional action, there's some really interesting things about that, I think. I mean, it does involve quite a coordinated and complex choreography of movement. You know, it involves kind of bending down and feeling the way of the dishwasher door and pulling it down and sliding out the door at the top and making a certain movement with your hand to get the cup out. And, uh, you know, and all the same time you're doing that, you're doing different things with your head and with your feet. And your eyes are doing certain things and you're kind of watching where you're going to put it at the same time. Possibly doing something else unrelated with the other hand. You know, at the same time I'm doing that, I'm, I'm kind of reaching up with my left hand to open the cupboard door to get the sugar out. So other things are happening as well, but uh, it's a really complex and coordinated movement, that whole thing. And the whole thing is organized by this intention. That whole action is grouped together. Um, at least it, not so much the, the bit about getting the sugar out of the cupboard, but certainly the bit about getting the cup out of the dishwasher is, uh, is entirely framed by this intention. Uh, so that's making me thinking about what this, what it is I'm doing right now, actually. Because when I was talking before, I was saying that uh, the reason why I was getting the coffee out uh, getting a cup of coffee for myself. One of the reasons, uh, one action, one uh, reply to a question, what are you doing, that I could have made, was, oh, I'm just getting ready to take the dogs for a walk. And that's what I'm doing right now, I'm taking the dogs for a walk. But that's, that's not really organizing my actions very much at all. So I'm here in the middle of this field, I've come down off the canal to avoid some of the dogs. I'm kind of wandering aimlessly through this field. I, I can't even see the dogs right now. I don't know where they've got to. I'm talking into a camera phone. I'm looking at the flowers and the trees and stuff. Listening to the distant sound of cars and the not so distant sound of birds. So there's a lot of other things going on which the, the action taking the dogs for a walk is not organizing in any meaningful way at all really. But I can't think of any action I'm doing right now that's being organized. And that's, I don't know, maybe that's something. I don't know, maybe that's why I'm doing it, actually. So I, do, I certainly do find it easier to, um, to talk and to a certain extent to think when I'm just kind of wandering along aimlessly in this way. In other words, when I suspend uh, participating in a, in a large-scale piece of intentional action, uh, if I come away from that and just have a quite a light, um, light touch relationship to to the overall action I'm engaged in, so I'm kind of taking dogs for a walk, but I'm not really doing much about that, um, and giving myself plenty of leeway in that. Follow my inclinations to step off the path and walk around the field for a while. That seems to be producing the conditions under which. I can find it easiest to think and talk uh, and perhaps engage in smaller scale intentions or keep my intentions a little bit more fluid. I'm not sure I'm going with all that really. I suppose I'm con yeah, I think I think what I'm doing here and I'm, it's I'm not sure if I'm really doing this or not actually. I might be just uh, making up a fairy tale to explain myself, but uh, one of the things I'm not doing, I should say, is uh, is following any particular plan right now. I was uh, I was at a film showing a few nights ago with uh, two really nice people, Joe Lawler and and, uh, and and Christine Malloy, and they were uh, they were talking about their film that they'd made, a really lovely film called Helen. And, uh, and about their plans and how they started the plans to make this feature-length film a few years back. 
and I made a series of short films in, in, between then and now. And uh, and somebody asked, it was a Q and A session. Someone asked how they kind of did that, and I think the response was something like, you know, they set themselves a goal at some point in the future, and all of the kind of sub, all the kind of opportunities or sub goals which presented themselves between then and now, they, they evaluated according to whether it would service their long-term goals. So if they were presented with an opportunity to do something, a piece of work, let's say, uh, which might have been very tempting, but didn't take them one step towards their long-term goal of making this feature film, they would turn it down, whereas they would accept goals which did take them that step forward. So, uh, you know, what I was getting from that was this you know, admirable level of organisation, really, really admirable. Uh, what I was getting from that was this, uh, you know, quite a, quite a strong association, quite a strong identification with the long-term intention, intentional action, uh, to the extent that it pr it's providing criteria for the smaller scale intentions that are going on as you go through which is almost exactly the opposite of why what I'm doing when I'm taking the dogs for a walk. Yes, the intention is to exercise the dogs, to take them on a certain journey and to get them back home, but I'm constantly stepping off the path. I'm constantly wandering around, aim, fairly aimlessly, not just, in, uh, not just in kind of physical ambulatory terms, but in kind of conceptual and, um, and verbal terms. I find myself rambling on these videos endlessly uh, and taking every opportunity to service a small opportunity for thinking or a small opportunity for walking through a field or a small opportunity for talking which is constantly leading me away from my long-term goal of exercising the dogs and getting them home. It is a lovely day, though. I mean, this tree above me is just fantastic. I'm going to just see if I can angle the camera to catch the light going through the branches. You can't beat that, really, I don't Anyhow, I don't know why I went into that. It's something to do with intentionality, something to do with the size of an intentionality, the... Uh, these long-term, what we might think of as goals or ambitions, uh, which may or may not organise the subordinate levels of intentionality, which which propel one towards that, or at least uh, form landmarks on one's way towards that ultimate intention, and the various different kinds of relationship one can have to that. Whether you focus entirely on your superordinate intention, the long-term goal. And, uh, and resist the temptations to follow subordinate uh, intentions, small opportunities, or whether, on the other hand, you uh, you wear that long-term intentionality lightly and uh, stop to smell the flowers all the time. I suppose the idea would be to have some control over it, so you can flicker between one and the other. <laughs>